When I was in Bukit Panjang, the principal would say, when he organizes the next year's program for the teachers to reshuffle and so on, uh, he'll say, first I'll fix the primary one teachers. And he said, Mrs. Nyanesh, you'll be the first primary one teacher. Then you go up with the children. You go to primary two with the same group of children. And then primary three, somebody takes over. So the children become like your family. You know their problems. There was a child that was badly abused. Every time she came back the weekend, on Mondays, she left scars on her. And they were little ones. You know, she was a little girl. She was very intelligent. That's the best part of it. Quiet, and she would do. But every time she comes back, on Monday, blue, black, marks all over. I observed this for some time, then I called for the mother. When the mother came and I said, what's happening? Why is she coming like this? And the mother kept giving excuses that she falls, she's a naughty girl, she runs around, you know, things like that. The child would just keep quiet. and. Uh, this didn't work. I talked to the mother and I said, please see that she doesn't get all these marks. She's a very intelligent girl. You want her to do better? But again, it went on for some time. Then I had to bring this matter to the principal. And this principal spoke to the mother. The mother handled this child. She had other children, but this child was from babyhood, she was brought up by the grandmother because the mother had a few, about four or five children. This was a third child or something. She gave it to the grandmother to look after. So later when the child joined in, she couldn't adjust to the others. She couldn't adjust to the mother herself. So she was ostracized, you know, sort of beaten up and pushed to a corner and so. That's why she was very quiet, comes to the class very quiet. But give her the work and she will do it beautifully. The children, when they come, they look at the teacher first. The first day, first day when they line up. I remember in May primary, the first day itself. And this little Chinese child cried and cried and cried, refused to go to that line where the teacher was standing in the front. And here I was standing in the front, the first day in the school. So all the children were lined up in my class. And this one screaming and the mother trying to pull and pull, and she refused and the principal got quite a bit upset because assembly time. So he went up and he pulled the child and he brought it screaming to the front and gave it to the ch teacher. But the, she pulled and she ran. Then he went and caught and he brought her to me. And the child came to me and she stopped crying. She just stood beside me. I just held her and took her to the line and put her in the front and held her. It was a shock. But I later realized they were, that Chinese teacher had this black eyelids that she had painted, uh, you know, uh, this blue and black. And she had this very dark, she, she's very obvious there. I mean, she always does that. This child had a fear. Child goes for someone who she feels is, they sense, you know like little puppies and so on. They sense the feeling. So I just took her and went to my line. She stood there and I had an extra child to teach. Children sense and they want to come and then they tell you their little secrets. You talk to them very strictly like a teacher. If they cry, then you must know why they are crying, they're hungry or whatever. If they want to go to the toilet or whatever. But you can't, you take the cane or uh, this thing and bang on the table. 
they, sh they scream or they shut their mouth and won't open, they can be stubborn. So they rally around you and support you when the <laughs> principal comes to do a testing. You know, sometimes they sit at the back and observe your class. Oh, they rally around and will be extra, <laughs> extra good to you because teacher is going, going to do a test. 